early morning is a cool oasis for life on limestone. The sun brings warmth and the challenge of a new day. This is a cedar glade, a natural opening in the forest caused by bedrock pushing its way to the surface. They're incredibly hot and dry. The soils are very, very shallow, so there's not a lot of water available for much of anything. There is a lot of rock and heat. A tough place, it would seem, for anything to live. Cedar glade is a habitat that's pretty unique. It has lots of different kind of species of flowers and things. It's a habitat that's pretty easy to just kind of drive by and pay no attention to. And when you get out here, there's all sorts of life, all sorts of things to see out here. One of those things is Echinacea tennysonensis. The leaves and the stem are fuzzy, which really stands out. Really beautiful sort of magenta pink petals that sits up like a daisy with its petals coming out at you, which makes it look quite unusual compared to other cone flowers. They've got a little cone in the center of them. Almost looks like a pine cone in maroons and yellows and greens. It is our homegrown plant. It's the Tennessee coneflower. Clawing out an existence in this rocky landscape, these colorful flowers worship the sun. The research that's been done on the coneflower and a lot of the other plants really has pointed to the fact that these plants are restricted to high sun habitats. They need a lot of sunlight. Congregated side by side, petal to petal, always looking to greet the day. 99% of the time, they're facing east. When you see the Tennessee coneflower in full bloom in the cedar glades, look at they're all facing the same direction. Standing only a few feet tall, the Tennessee coneflower is much shorter than the more common purple coneflower. But don't let its size fool you. This flower is built to survive. The irony about the Tennessee coneflower is that it is a federally protected plant. Okay, and a lot of people interpret that as it's not easy to grow or it's temperamental or it's just a weak plant. It's very tough, very durable. We promote it as one of the toughest plants we grow. I like to think of the coneflowers as resilient because they make it in some tremendously tough habitats when the coneflowers are blooming. Most of the glade background is green, different shades of green, different textures of green, and you see those coneflowers and it's this big, pop of color and it really grabs your attention. The flower has been grabbing the attention of nature photographer Byron Jajorian for almost 20 years. Somebody from the Nature Conservancy brought me out here and I was overwhelmed. They wanted me to photograph them that day and I did while they were with me and then I started coming back and I came back every day for 30 days and I just couldn't stop coming back. I think they're beautiful flowers. The shape of them, there's a lot of different shades of pink. It's kind of an unusual color. Byron's fascination with the flower was soon shared with the entire state when he was asked to provide some images for a phone book cover. As I was showing the pictures to the lady who was gonna make the decision, she said, oh, that's a pretty flower, what's that? And I started telling her the story of it being the first plant put on the endangered species list and it's only found in ten Middle Tennessee. And she said, well, something like that should be what's on the cover of the phone book. And so that jump started my career and got a, an image on the front of the phone book. And it also got Bell South involved in donating some money to help protect the flower. While the cone flower flourishes in hostile environments, its numbers had decreased to the point that it was thought to be extinct buried under a wave of suburban development that consumed the land. In the early 1990s, the Tennessee Natural Heritage Program, the Natural Areas Program, the Nature Conservancy started talking with landowners in the area, engaging their interest in trying to start protecting some of these habitats for the cedar glades and also for the, the Tennessee coneflower. 
With funding help from Bell South, American Airlines, and Cracker Barrel, as well as the state of Tennessee and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Nature Conservancy began purchasing tracts of land where the coneflower lived. Over time, the 122-acre Couchville Cedar Glade State Natural Area was formed, a protected home for an enduring flower. I think it's important that we protect everything because it's all interwoven. We don't really fully understand how each piece fits together. And everything, no matter how small, contributes. People will ask, what good is that plant? Why does it matter to me? I believe that all of these things are a gift. They're a gift freely given, and we have an opportunity to respond to what's been given to us and to respond in a way that respects and takes care of things. In a sense, when we take care of things like these flowers, what we're really doing is taking care of ourselves. Our gift to them is given back in ways we may not yet even comprehend. I feel like I have known the flowers for some time and, and knowing that they've made such a strong comeback and also the connection of, of how this kind of helped get my career started uh, it makes me feel real good inside. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.